three, two, one. On today's episode of Top Dog, we have Top Dog, Hannah Dubine. <laughs> so the reason I wanted to talk to Hannah today is I met Hannah at the Tom Ferry Summit. Um, that was what, last month? And Hannah was actually asked by Tom Ferry himself to be on stage with, I think it was four other um, agents that are just absolutely killing it in real estate. And these, I, Hannah, how old are you? I'm sorry. I'm 23. You, I'm 23. 23 years old. Hannah is 23 years old and she's already stood on stage with Tom Ferry. Now, typically the people that stand on stage with Tom Ferry have been in this industry for probably five, six years. And it's taken them many years to get to the point to where they're closing that many deals that they're being invited by the one and only Tom Ferry. And I mean, for example, let's kind of go over how your years looked, your last 12 months. So this is this is intense. So she sent this over to me and I, I I'm just I'm just in awe. In the last 12 months, you've had 42 pending and sold. And I think that was that was a total of $26.6 million, correct? That's about right. Yep. That's a, that's just that's so incredible. And you've been in so you've been in the business for two and a half years? About two and a half years, yeah. And you got into I've been licensed for three years. I just came up on my three-year license anniversary, but I was an assistant for a little bit and I, I didn't really do much, but yeah. Okay. No, that's, I, I, look, anything under five years and being at your level is impressive I mean, for the mass majority of realtors in this industry, because I feel like there's, you know, you, you, you can run a business. Well, actually there's two ways to be a realtor. You can be a realtor that just does a deal here and there every once in a while, or you can actually start and run an actual business. And yeah. typically people that do do that, it takes them years to get to that point where they can start their business and start running it, where it looks like you got a coach a real estate coach with Tom Ferry six months in? Yeah, it was about six months because it was two years ago. Six months in and people, if you're not invested in coaching for real estate, it is expensive, but I can tell you right now it is, you, you get 10X on your returns or in her case, Probably worth it. way more than 10X. <laughs> <laughs> um, you currently have six and a half million in escrow, correct? Or maybe that's closed. Maybe something like that. I think we're we're hopefully having another pending today for one point four million. So, God, that's amazing. Okay. And and where are you located again? So I'm in Vancouver, Washington area, which is a secondary market to Portland. If you know where Portland, Oregon I is, I do. I do. I'm over the river in Washington. I don't do Portland at all. Don't go into Oregon. I just do our secondary market. It's a wonderful place to live. Our median sales price for the county is like low 500s it's about 525 the city i love to service camas is about 750 so we're not really at california crazy prices but we're also not like super low where you have to do tons and tons of transactions to make money i was gonna i was actually gonna point that out because it's really interesting being in my market you know i can close one deal for two million dollars and looking at people that are in other markets to get to that number it has to be volume like yeah. so many deals closed and no I, I'm actually familiar where you are so having a 1.4 million dollar escrow today that's yeah. amazing that's that's Do so anything, far above anything over a million dollars is like a great sale here and two million dollars is like you have to be really really good and experienced to get those sales there's I mean there's probably less than five every month in the county so, so what's the highest priced home you've seen sell since you've been in the industry in your market? Probably around the six to seven million dollar mark. Okay, okay. Kind of estate like homes. Okay, wow, that's yeah. Trust a me, see or something like that will transfer hands. And those are really, really nice. You'll you'll have one of those very, very soon. I hope so. Mm -hmm. I, I I know you will. And um, it looks like. Okay, I'm gonna go. I have a, so much information about you. I mean, I remember our talk at summits. Um, at you remember Marissa's party? Yeah, that, that was awesome. Club? That's where I met you. I know. Yeah, I was like, oh my god, that was the girl on stage. Like, I have to talk to her. I, I, I anybody that goes on stage at one of those events, if you don't make the time to talk to them, she's been in the business for two and a half years. I've been in this business for nine, like nine years, and I, I mean, you're an idiot in my opinion, if you don't go to these type of people like Hannah, 
you're you're killing it. You're a star. You're killing it. If you don't go to these people and try to have a conversation with them and learn at least one thing, then I mean, what are you even doing? Why are you yeah. spending the money to go to these events? And I mean, look, Tom Ferry is amazing. Someone's amazing, but I get so much more value during the breaks and during the events at night and talking with the agents that were on stage than I even do listening to them on, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love it. And everybody should go to summit, but you know, I, I think I, I, I she was at a table next to the bar and I ditched two friends I was with. Cause I was like, dudes, I'll be right back. And I, I sat down and I remember just picking your brain about your story you were talking about. And these kids, I don't want to call you, you're not a kid. You're not a kid. These people that were on stage with her, they were some of the cockiest real estate agents I think I've ever seen, literally telling old people in the business to step aside or no, to start yeah. running, to start running because you're coming up behind them. And it wasn't quite was, my style, but to each no, and, was what I'll say kindly. So it was awesome though. Even I'm sitting there 36 and I'm like, damn, I am old. <laughs> <laughs> I was like I gotta go talk to these people this is amazing so yeah I got some great nuggets from you and um I really wanted to go over your story and go over what the difference is between you and everybody else in this industry based on their first you know I want to say two to five years so yeah. in two and a half years you've done something extraordinary you've built an actual business a business that people that have been in the business for nine, like myself, or 10, 20 years would envy, even even at where they are in their and and you know, in their business. I mean, I'm sorry, but 26 million closed in the last 12 months. That means you were in the business for a year and a half and you were closing 26 million dollars. Mm -hmm. You start you, you started that trend of getting to 26 million. That's amazing. Yeah, thank you. So you're so welcome. Thank you for being here. Yeah. So tell me, how do you get your deals? Tell what is, let's say that you walk into the office every day. What are, how, what is your pro? That's your office. Look at that. You got real in the door and everything. So everybody, by the way, she's also a, an agent with real brokerage like myself. And, you know, as you can see, all the great agents are with real. And uh, if you have any questions about real, you can reach out to myself or Hannah and we'd That's be happy to best brokerage ever I i've been it. with oh my god it's amazing i've been with keller williams i've been with uh, rodeo realty in beverly hills compass mm -hmm. and i cannot tell you the experience i look i can talk to people like this this is amazing so it's it's come on over to real done with that <laughs> um so you you show up to work what does your day look like so right now i've been getting to office probably around 8 a.m every day Okay. Super close to my house, which I'm very thankful for. And then my goal is to ignore emails and go straight into my follow-up boss and go through my task list for an hour or so. Okay, so uh, you're using follow-up boss for yeah. um, your CRM. I just, just switched to FUB, which is amazing because it integrates with everything. I knew I had to go bigger. But before that, I had a different one and it worked fine, right? I oh, just totally. My task list. And I'm calling texting, sending bomb bomb video emails, depending on what kind of contact information I have for leads, um, sending additional information, checking in, et cetera, for about an hour each day. And then okay. my goal is also to hit the hot sheets, see what's come on the market, go through, look at my current client list over here on my second screen and send properties to clients who are either active now or they're like kind of looking or, hey, this made me think of you or, hey, this one, like a client that already has bought um, in the past, something comes for sale in their neighborhood, I'm sending it to them. Okay. So that's what I'm doing for like the first few hours of the day. That's amazing. So let me ask you about your, okay, so when you're sending properties to your clients, so your prospects, mm -hmm. are you doing like a mass email of properties? Like, so like, let's say, you know, you're sending me properties, you know, I want like a four, three, um, no more than like $1.2 million. Yeah. Are you sending me every four, three for $1.2 million or tell me your process with getting to know your buyers and how you select what's good for them. Cause most agents, I'll be honest, they put a search on the MLS and they just let that, they let that handle, they let that just go. Yeah. And what I've realized is that really, really upsets buyers because it makes them feel like you don't know me. Right. I have MLS search set up for the clients that want to be on it, but Got I'm it. Not an agent that's like, I'm going to put you on an MLS search. And if you see anything, let me know. Like, yeah. 
I'll put them on it as kind of a backup because usually they're already looking on Zillow every day too. And totally. they're going to get less emails and then I'll send them stuff every day too. But I pretty much only scrub the listings in the morning because that's the only time I'm in front of my computer and actually I'm able to do that. Once the afternoon goes by, you know, everything has kind of gone everywhere and the day has gone crazy. So it's pretty much impossible for me to get back in front of the new listings. Totally. But people appreciate it because it reminds them that you're thinking of them, even if the listing isn't perfect for them. It just is a good way to stay in contact. You want to touch them as much as possible. Yeah, especially for my long-term prospects. Maybe they're not buying for another year or two. Um, oh, I've yeah. definitely let some of those go on accident. I forgot to set follow-up tasks. And then I come back to them and lo and behold, they already bought. And that was my own fault. I hate when that, that's happened to me probably two times. I I, mm-hmm. I totally, I hate when that happens. Mm-hmm. You just beat yourself up like so much, you know, and it's a great lesson to be learned though. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, so that's your first like few hours in the morning is a lot of follow up. Mm-hmm. So in your day, when do you go after new business? Or how do you go after new business? So I would say probably in the afternoons, like, okay, let me continue on my my daily routine. Sure. Like we hit mid-morning, we hit like 11 a.m. And I'm open for appointments now if I need to go see someone. But I'm usually on like a Zoom in Tom Ferry or a real broker or maybe I'm in meetings. I just hired a new assistant. So Hey, I remember you were talking about that at Summit. That's awesome. Yeah, she's great. She's working at home today, but she usually works in here. And um, so maybe we'll work on a project together. We'll do a training right now. I'm working extra because she's here. I've got to, you know, you go down before you go up. Um, and then afternoon hits and my goal is to be out doing appointments in the afternoon. So those appointments could be showings. They could be listing consultations. They could be, uh, I could be door knocking, perhaps I could be doing open houses this afternoon. I'll be going to an open house and I will door knock the neighbors there. Um, but I would say a lot of my business right now is inbound because I do a lot of videos. So I yes, do, you do. I do the outbound really stuff, active. but I also do the inbound stuff. Totally. Oh no. And you have to do a combination of both. I agree, but no, you're yeah. doing great um, on Instagram. Thank you. Yeah. I, 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 I've noticed, I, I, I unfortunately didn't follow you before Summit, but once I did follow you at Summit, I know I'm so sorry, <laughs> but I, you know, and I've been, I've been keeping an eye on you because I say the interesting people, um, did you know you could turn your Instagram into a CRM? What, with the, the starred people, like your favorites? You can save a video and then once you hit the save, it gives you an option to create a category. So like I have a, I have a category for like Asian attraction to bring people on to real. I have a category for my podcast. You're going to show me that later. Oh, it's amazing. So yeah, I just learned this like two weeks ago. Um, but yeah, so you're doing fantastic. You're like actually, and I think that's the couch you're sitting on during your videos, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> see, I, 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 see, I told you. So yeah, no, you're doing great. So keep that up because honestly, Thanks. the people that are not getting behind video right now are going to fall behind the next two to five years. It's It's things are just it, it's taking over so yeah. good on you thank you thank so you. keep going with your daily routine i will <laughs> and well no keep telling me about it too is that uh, oh, okay know. sorry i thought you meant keep oh, going like oh, you better keep okay. doing it you're doing great uh, that's kind of the end of the day though so we do appointments okay. and then it's evening and i'm going home um i try really hard not to work past seven so i actually tell my clients that's kind of my end of the day unless it's something urgent and i tell them hey the only thing that's urgent is really an offer that's pretty much it oh look at you and and it's worked out really really well so that i can have some time to unplug i just don't understand the mentality of being available 24 7 i think that's got to change like especially if you had a family i don't have kids right now but it's kind of being People expecting you to respond to 8, 9, 10 p.m. That's ridiculous. So no, basically you're telling that. me you can close okay. as many deals as you do and still have a work-life balance. Yeah. A lot of people would disagree with you. And that's why I love talking to people like you because you clearly are doing it on a day to ba- on a day-to-day basis and you're killing it. Thank you. And I'm not perfect. I always have, you know, uh, goals that I'm striving towards. I go through seasons where I work more, I go through seasons where I hang out oh, more and chill out more, but it's a work in progress. Oh no, of course. And you know, it's always going to be that way. As you know, it's always going to be a work in progress. Things are always going to change. The market's going to shift. So, mm-hmm. but you have the foundation that a lot of people don't have. And it seems like you have values 
And I feel like a lot of people in business are suffering yeah. from the lack of understanding what their values are. Yeah, and also, yeah. And then not just understanding their values, but really putting that into the practice of, you know, marketing and prospecting. I want to work with people that share my values. Yeah. Right. So it sounds like you got, it sounds like you got that um, figured out, which I, again, am impressed by considering, I, I, I hope I'm not making you feel bad, but I'm listening. You're only been in the age of the business for two and a half years. I say, I I'm very impressed. I get it all the time. Okay. I understand. I'm young, but I'm an old soul on the inside. So. Oh no, Hannah. I, I, and I didn't mean that you look, I, I, okay. Wow. I'm just like, <laughs> you're fine. I'm not you, offended. I'm not, you I'm, look very, you look young, but talking to you. Yeah. If we were talking, I would have assumed you were in the business for 10 plus years. Oh, thank you. So that, that's what I mean by show. this. Okay. <laughs> okay. So that's your day. We understand that you have values. You have, you, you, seems like you keep a promise to yourself by ending everything at 7 p.m. Client uh, I work on projects sometimes in the evening, depending on the time of year, but. Of course. How I mean, business is. Sometimes you don't want to do anything but work anyway, too, right? You can go home, be like, I want to watch a movie, and then all of a sudden, you know, I really want to get that post out. I should start editing that now. Uh, you know, it's just, you love what you do, right? I love it. It's great. It's exactly. So really, at the end of the day, going home and then making the decision to work a little bit more is more like, it's fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so... Here's a really interesting question. So we talk about the new generation of realtors and how they're really killing it on social media. And then we have the old realtors, 36, yep. I should call myself old. Um, we have realtors that are older than me. And so I want to know, has there been a realtor that is older than you that has really inspired you as far as your business goes and um, how you operate your business, I should say? I love that question when you sent me it, especially coming off the summit when there was a little bit of disrespect up there on the stage. I had to. I'm I, sorry. I, I loved it at the same time. I loved it. Was, it was, yes, yes. <laughs> so I came from Cold Banker prior. That's where I was my entire career prior to Real. Um, I don't know if there's one particular person, but there's a handful of people that kind of took me under their wing in Cold Banker. And there's a lot of agents, like any market here, that have been around for a long time. And I think what I really respect about them is, first of all, <laughs> I didn't realize like there was a time when they were manually running documents to each other. They had manual MLS books, everything they had to oh, learn yeah. themselves. They had to go completely out of the way for every little detail. Yep. And a lot of them have this super in-depth knowledge about everything, neighborhoods and community related. I mean, oh, they know totally. all the tea that's happened over the last 10 or 15 years. And so I really appreciate that about them. And I tried to take that on myself as well, uh, because I see a lot of new agents, particularly the young ones who are just caring only about what the outcome is for them. And they don't necessarily care about getting to know the area. Like I am very heavily invested time, money-wise in learning about the subdivisions in my community. And it's why people choose to work with me because I can tell them this, that, this, and the other about every neighborhood in Camas, about every neighborhood in East Vancouver. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I love that you pointed out you care about the community. You're invested mm -hmm. financially and time into really understanding your community. Like the, and you're totally right. The older generation of realtors really, I mean, everything was done manually. They, they had to have- done one-on-one -on -one conversations with as many people as possible to get the information that you and I can get online in five minutes. You know what yeah. I mean? It's really, it's really, it's, it's really interesting. So exactly. I hope she doesn't kill me for saying this, but I see, so I saw your post with Jen Dillard the other day. Mm -hmm. Are you guys yeah. co-listing something together? Yeah, we have a co-listing right now, which is fun. Jen is about an hour and change away from me and we don't, okay cross markets. I don't serve at all where she serves and she really doesn't serve where I do, but she had one client that refused to list with anyone else. So she said, Hannah, you come on, you do the in-person stuff and help. And that's been great. Loved it. That's stuff. amazing. And yeah. Jen Dillard was also on stage at Summit this year. So you have these two rock stars that are representing the seller, who's a very lucky person, um, having the both of you servicing them. Um, so Jen, did you know Jen before? um summit you guys actually been in contact i feel like she's one 
I, I can't wait to have her on the podcast. I mean, I think Jen yeah. is incredible. Have, were you learning from her at all before you met her um, at Summit? Or is this somebody, sorry, did you, did you know her before or did you meet her at Summit? So it's funny because I always kind of knew who Jen was because she's okay. a big presence online. I remember moving to my area a couple of years ago and going, oh gosh, that lady's got like, she's doing a lot of stuff over there, you know? Yeah kind of if you're looking from afar you're like hmm I like what they're doing I'm kind of jealous though but I hadn't met her until last year I actually met her at the real conference last year what was it well, it was one real last year and um that was right when I was coming on so I'm on oh wow and yeah it's really great to be close to someone but also we're in our own markets so we're excited oh totally so you can actually lean on each other I mean she's a great person to learn from I mean she's been in the business for a while and um, I cannot wait to have her on here talking about parties. That's yes. I, I, I'm party so queen. excited about event that. Event queen. Yes. <laughs> event queen. Oh, my God. That's going to be the name of that podcast. Okay. That's perfect. <laughs> um, oh, and this is always my favorite because I, I, I don't know if you've seen my Instagram, but I'm obsessed with morning routines. Okay. So I ask everybody, like, tell me what your morning looks like. And there's no wrong answer here. I'm just so curious. Okay. I have like a somewhat morning routine. It's always changing a little bit. The problem with me is I need structure, but I also get bored easily. Sure. So I do something for a while and then I'm like, I got an itch to change it. But I usually wake up around six. Okay. Sometimes I go to the gym in the morning. Sometimes I go to the gym in the evening. So it might vary a little bit depending on sure. when I go to the gym. Um, and then I will have my breakfast smoothie that I've been having every day for like ever since high school. No way. Delicious. And get ready for the day. Try to take some time to just read the Bible and, you know, be in a quiet space in the morning. And then I go to my computer. I try to just fish out some emails before I hit the office, which eventually I will give to my assistant so I don't have to do that. And then I leave and I go do the day. So it sounds like every day you make a point to really work on your body, work on your mind. And it sounds like your spirituality as well. Cause mm -hmm. I mean, I know for a lot of people, the best thing you can do for, you know, your soul and let's just say your mind is really kind of dive into scripture in the morning or even sometimes before bed. So. Yeah. I like the morning. Cause it's just, I don't pick up. So I put my phone in my office not in my okay. I don't look at my phone until usually I leave for the day so it's a couple hours that I just don't look at it there's nothing that needs me before really 8 30 or 9 a.m um and so that's really the quiet time when my brain hasn't been like yet <laughs> oh no I'm totally with you I mean like my morning routine I actually have my family times I have two kids mm -hmm. and um I leave my phone away from me I, I will totally grab my phone and not even realize that I'm that I'm doing it yeah, until my bad. wife is yeah, and my wife's like, hello. I'm, like, so yeah. sorry. I'm so sorry. So yeah, no, it's great that you leave it in your office and you really work on your growth. And mm -hmm. um, you know, I one thing I've noticed is talking to very successful people, and that includes you, um, is that they actually do take time out of their day for growth in in, in three different ways. One, education. You can get that from the Bible, by the way, a hundred percent. People yeah. I talk to people that literally make business decisions based on what they've learned from scripture. I think it's incredible. Yeah. Um, they're, they work on their body. They go to the gym, they do yoga, whatever it is and mm -hmm. um, health. And it sounds like you have, send me the smoothie recipe. I would love to try okay. it. I, I, I would here. love to try it. Oh, that's fine. You can just type it out for me if you're willing to, um, you know, and I've noticed that people that take care of themselves in these ways really have, what's the word, uh, an advantage at um, becoming successful a lot faster. Yeah. I don't know if it's the structure or if it's just that they're growing um, or what it is, but I feel like people that actually get up at a certain time. So typically nine percent of the time, like I wake up at four and mm -hmm. that's just because again, I have kids that wake up at seven. So I got a lot to do before that basically, <laughs> <laughs> but um you know, I, I appreciate you sharing that with us because I think it's really important that people that are listening to this to know that it's a good idea. They don't have to do it, but it's a good idea to develop some type of routine before you go to work to get yourself in the right mindset and space. 
I've always been a very structured and rigid kind of person, believe it or not. Uh, so it just comes a little bit naturally to me, but I'm always surprised to hear about realtors, you know, ones that are just working for themselves who don't wake up at a certain time or don't like start work at a certain time. Most yeah. days. of course we love the flexibility to change that sometimes, but it can't be the regular. And lo and behold, usually those people are not doing so well and they're exactly. not consistent. <laughs> Exactly. And I don't know if it's because they integrate real estate into their life, because at the end of the day, like for me and for you, this is, I mean, yes, you have a boyfriend, correct? Mm -hmm. I remember you talking about him. So we have, we have other aspects of our life. Yeah. But we really make real estate. I mean, it's not just a job. I mean, we're providing a service to people that are making one of the biggest decisions of their lives. And the people that realize that I feel really take it to heart. Mm -hmm. So it's not a nine to five for us, you know, and I feel like it's an all day, all night. Sometimes we wake up, we, have you woken up yet having a dream about a deal that's going on? And you're just like, oh my God, did I file that right? Did I, did I, did I check that box? So that's the blessing of a transaction coordinator. Who I agree. Amazing. I, I used to probably do that a couple of times before I had my TC about a year and a half ago. And, and okay. she's just really phenomenal. So, but I'm sure the day will come where I'll wake up with some <laughs> moment. <laughs> oh, totally. It's happened to me a few times. And then you realize, oh my God, of course I've done this right. I've been doing this for years. I don't mm -hmm. know why I thought that. But uh... <laughs> so one thing I want to do with this podcast with you is I would really like to touch two people. Um, one would be somebody just getting into the business and I want to make sure yeah. we can give them some steps to take yeah. every single day to do that. And then second, yeah. I want to talk to the people that, I mean, look, we've lost 60,000 plus agents this year already to what's going on with real estate and we're going to lose a lot more. So that's why I started this um, last month. I really want to provide as much free service as possible. So I want to be able to give from your perspective, three things an agent can do every single day Love to it. help them get to your level, whether they're new or I don't want to say old, my title rep. I'm going to yell at her after this. Um, how dare she? <laughs> how dare she? Okay. So three things, three things for a new agent getting into real estate. And if it's different, if it's not, but if it's different, three things for a more seasoned agent to um start doing if they're not doing it okay perfect because i have three exact things in mind i'm going to give everyone my exact playbook from when i started thank you please so the first thing i did was i met other agents in the area a lot of them were in my cold banker office at the time but i networked with them and i got deals from them believe it or not i got wow. their calls. i got their open houses um i got their leads they didn't want and i convert a business that way. That was two years ago when there was a little bit more to go around, but it's still very important. And I really lean into agent relationships because you never know who's going to have a listing or a buyer for something or a recommendation. Maybe you need a second opinion. So, yeah. important. okay. So meet other agents. I, my goal was to have one coffee meeting a week with a agent that I respect in the marketplace, you know, maybe not the top, top producers because they're too busy, but sure. well, kind yeah. of more in the middle. Perfect. Sure. So have coffee with agents that are experienced. Number two was to go um, preview properties every day. I was told that I was supposed to have appointments in the afternoon, but I said, hmm, I have an appointments with, I don't have any clients. So I had appointments with myself and I went out and I saw the properties in the areas that I wanted to sell in. Like I didn't go to the crappy ones in the crappy part of town because I didn't want to sell those. So sure. I went to the nice area and I learned about the home. So then I'd have something to talk about. And maybe I'd do a video if the listing agent said it was okay. And then I'd go door knock and talk to the neighbors and say, hey, what what do you think about the neighborhood? I have someone who might be interested, which was true. So, I might have I'm interested. They might call me. <laughs> so, so you basically, okay, so somebody gave you a playbook, said have meetings every day in the afternoon. You didn't have clients, but you still practiced that. You said, okay, great. I'm going to schedule meetings with myself. Mm -hmm. and then set what that meeting was going to look like every day. Yeah. So that way when you had clients, now you actually had a system and a routine going. Yep. That's and then really number cool. three is open houses. 
Okay. I made it a point to be the best agent at open houses in my office so that agents would give me their good open houses before they sent them out to the group email. Okay. And so I would do one every Saturday and Sunday. That's pretty much as much as I could handle. And that's where a lot of my first business came from as well. And then tangentially, I know that's already three, but tangentially, no, please, please, do videos, do videos to kind of capitalize on all of the momentum from those. Amazing. Okay. So you did one open house a day on the weekends. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's huge. You also mentioned that you became the best at open houses. What exactly did you do at those open houses that made you the best? I feel like the bar was kind of low anyways, but I just put out <laughs> I just put out more signs than people. I don't go okay. absolutely insane. I didn't have time to put out 30 like some people, but sure. I would put out like depending on where it's at, eight to ten. Okay. And basically I would come to the listing agents with a pitch, like, here's what I'm gonna do for you. I'm gonna make sure that you're represented well. First of all, I'm gonna know things about the open house. Drives me crazy when I go into an open house and the listing agent's like, Oh, you ask them the most basic question. They don't know the answer. They don't know the answer to the open house that they're holding. And it's yep. the most basic question. It's not some crazy question. It's a basic question. So I always ask the agent a set of questions so that I knew how to answer. It made me look better for potential clients and it made the agent look better. I mean, come uh, on, right? Uh, totally. Do you actually have a list of questions that you ask or is it all in your head? I think I have it somewhere, but I don't know where it is anymore. It's kind of in my head now. Would you be willing to write that down and send that to me that I can offer yeah. with this? Is that okay? Absolutely. Just email me the reminder and I'll send it to you. I will 100% do that. I think that's because I think it's really important. I actually did a video on holding open houses for um, for people that, you know, for new agents. Yeah. And it was so funny because the listening agent I held it for was shocked that I had all of these questions when I called him because I wanted to make sure, obviously, I, I don't yeah. want to have to call you during the open house. That makes me look yeah. bad. Uh, absolutely. You know, so I, you I, I, I love that. You have oh, to. Oh, absolutely. And then I have my open house table. Um, It's literally a nightstand that's like tall and just has four legs. Okay. It's, it's like a little table. And then I'll stand at the front with my flyer box. So I have the flyers that I make as well that look nice. I have the listing agent and my contact info on it. And then um, like my business cards and I stand at the front door. I've played around with forced sign-in versus non-forced sign-in. I tend to lean towards non and I just really okay. want to connect well with um with the people that I'm already feeling an attraction with. Of course. Rather than trying to connect with everyone. That's some good advice that I got. Hone in on the people that you feel like are gonna work out. Oh, I agree with you hundred percent. Instead of wasting your time focusing on getting them to sign in, right? Now you can yeah. leave the sign in sheet and focus on floating around and finding your potential client. Mm-hmm. I love that. That's amazing. Because I know a lot of coaches would say, no, you get them to sign that. They don't, they're not allowed in. I've had a coach literally tell me if they don't sign, they're not coming in. I'm just like. And I've, and listen, I understand. I wish that people would be more receptive to signing in. I think of that course. agents have like many things, they have made a bad reputation for that because they've bombarded people. The truth is we know whoever is going in the house for showing and it is a security risk to the seller when there's random people coming through, but that's how it is. Yeah. I talked to an agent in the Bay area and I asked him about sign-in sheets. He says, I don't, I do them, but differently. I said, Oh, explain to me how you do your sign-in sheet. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. He says, basically this is what I do. When they come in, I ask them for their Instagram and I follow them. And I was like, you actually ask them for their answer. Yeah. I just type their name in right there on my phone and I follow them. And I say, I would love for you to follow me back. Mm -hmm. um and he says the ones that do typically turn into clients he mm -hmm. says not everybody will follow but in a couple of weeks he'll go through and you know actually reach out to the people that didn't follow him back and try to get a follow and just check in with them but the yeah. ones that actually follow back that day typically end up calling him three to five days later and then he actually is able to represent them on a deal yeah you'll have to give me that agent's contact info i'd like I to know how need to find that. that yeah i i it was a gentleman out of san francisco and i ran into him at um at summit i don't remember his name <laughs> i'll find out and i'll let you know but it seems it seemed less evasive to me to like like get their social media uh instead of getting yeah i need your name no your, your full name middle two <laughs> and then you know your phone number your email are you yeah. looking to sell like no no just hey let's build a connection right you know so Absolutely. 
I appreciate the three or four things that you actually gave us, which is even the more the merrier. I just want people to actually be able to succeed in this business. Yeah. I would say a big leg up that I had to, which I didn't really realize was a leg up until maybe a year ago, is when I moved here, I was just, all I had to do was pretty much work. I lived in a rental house with two other girls. I rented a room. My office was in the corner of that room. My boyfriend was going to school in Eastern Washington, so I couldn't hang out with him most of the time. And I didn't really have any family here besides his family. And he wasn't here, so I didn't see him that much. So I just worked a lot. And I didn't work 24-7, but like I didn't have events that I was going to in the evening. I didn't have a big friend group that I was hanging out with. I didn't have kids. And so I just kind of poured into the business during that time. And it set a lot of the good groundwork that I know a lot of people who have crazy lives already they've already got kids they've already got families and commitments it yeah. for them to get to that point but you just, you, you just buckled down i did you just you, you you had a goal and you you just went for it exactly do you know what your here's a question because i mean goal setting i know we hear this so much in the entrepreneurship world just different mm -hmm. methods did you have did you have a did you have like a what did you have as far as goals go? Did you have a, um, help me out here, a vision board? Did you have like a journal where you fill out your goals every day? Or did you just know like, I want to be like this and that's, and this is how I'm going to do it. Like, what was your whole vision for becoming who you, I'm assuming this is $26.6 million in the last 12 months. And I'm sitting there thinking that you wanted to be here. No, she doesn't want to be here. She wants to be at $26.6 .6 million every three months. <laughs> and I have a feeling that you're just, you're just literally, this is you just starting. You're going to be a billion dollar a year producer, probably in less than 10 years. And I'll take bets on that. Okay. I'll come back to you in 10 years and we'll see how that's going. I do think about that sometimes, right? Like I am right now in our county. I'm the number one buyer's agent in our county. I'm no, very, I'm very really? Proud. Yeah. And I, I heard that. I was like, awesome. And I was like, wait, no, I just I started. How can I be number one? You know, like that's crazy. And so definitely the sky's the limit. My framework for setting goals has mostly been off of Tom Perry business plan. That's what I have available to me. I don't want to, yeah. I have to do it anyway. So let's just go based off that. And my first coach was very numbers oriented. So I'd go through those numbers every day on our sheet. And I just have that number in the back of my head, really the number of clients I want to serve every year, the GCI, I want to make the revenue I want to have in my business. And then, yeah, I have a vision board up too. And um, think and grow rich. That's, that's probably my favorite book my favorite business book to read oh and my god I'm every always, year I'm always thinking about that yeah oh yeah do you read that every year yeah or maybe even more than that and it's like the one thing I always one people, it. oh it's such a great book it's, it's such so, a great book it's so good that book is just I don't know it's it's like more than a book like the pages have energy in that oh book. my god and you know have you watched the movie yet I didn't know there was a movie, really. Oh, my God. So they it's really hard to find. I'm going to have to find the link and give it to you. Remind me later what? if I forget. But, yeah, it has, like, Grant Cardone in it. So they go over all the all of the stories. Is in Grant the Cardone in it? He's in it talking about cash flow for a minute. But it's based I don't know on, if I want to watch it. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> He's in it for a second. Barbara Corcoran's in it. I mean, like, there's, like, really uh, um, interesting people that are narrating in a way. But, no, like, it's... It's the book 100%. All the stories you hear about in the book, all everything that happens in the book is what's related in the video. Mm. Don't focus on Grant Cardone too much. Okay. Um, I'm not a huge fan of him anymore either. I used to be. Um, but uh, it's, it's still a powerful movie. Although I think sitting down and really reading the book and resonating with what you're reading is more powerful. Uh, it's just, if you're into the book, it's a fun thing to watch. Mm -hmm. so remind me if you want to watch it and i'll send you a link i'll find it okay and um <laughs> so I, how do you manage let's uh, so like okay you have 43 plus closings a year as of right now as of right now 43 plus closings a year mm -hmm. how are you managing that workload i understand you have a new assistant now but before the assistant that's a lot of people to deal with I mean, minimum of four people on each side, on each transaction, right? On each side sometimes. 
So how are you managing keeping everybody happy when you have that much workflow? Yeah, sometimes I don't. I mean, sometimes it's a lot and I feel like the world is going to explode. Like, I'll just be honest. I really am in that spot right now where I'm trying to dig myself out of that. Like the lowest point or whatever, the hardest point was probably between March and August of this year. I just bought a new house, which is big and great, but you know, had a lot to manage and was doing a lot of business at the same time. So it was like all of these changes at once and it's been overwhelming. My setup right now is I have my transaction coordinator that works on a per file basis. She handles all the transaction stuff. My assistant, my plan is to never have my assistant deal with paperwork um, because the paperwork is so time sensitive and I need someone who's really experienced in it. So my transaction coordinator, Sinead, she continues to handle that. My assistant, whose name is also Hannah, by the way. Oh, amazing. Yeah, she is um, doing more of the client care stuff, the marketing, the behind the scenes, errands, dropping things off, things that are not the best dollar per hour use of my time. And so I'm trying to let go of those a little bit and spend more time doing um, the prospecting based activities that get me more clients. And yeah, I'm just, I guess the answer to your question is I'm, I'm working on how to handle all of it. Getting like things like Zapier and Fall Boss set up are going to automate away a lot of the manual tasks that I was doing. And do you have your assistant helping you set that all up or is that all you? I'm setting it up right now with my engineer boyfriend who's having fun on Zapier. Oh, you're um, so lucky. Yeah. Oh, it's great. It's really great. And um, Hannah will be executing on it and of course learning how to modify it in the future. I think that's so important when um, being a real estate agent at your level, you know, because when you have that many transactions going on, if you don't have automation, I feel like you're just kind of slowly losing, just not losing control, but it's taking over. It can take over a lot of important, because what the most important thing you do every day is follow up and prospecting, mm-hmm. right? And I feel like with that many transactions going, that can easily overshadow you know, what you have to do. Do you yeah. make your prospecting and follow up just it's non-negotiable task, right? Non-negotiable every day. Or is that, you know, some days you're like, okay, I can get back. To, I can spend extra time on this tomorrow. Like, how do you, how do you run that? I would like it to be non-negotiable. Sure. I've struggled with it recently because I have an assistant who right now in my one office suite in the share office sharing space, she sits next to me. And at some point in the morning, we need to talk about what we're doing for the day. And so to delay that until 11 is a little difficult. So we have the meeting in between kind of where I used to be the only one prospecting and I'm working on it. (laughs) No, yeah. Most days and if not, then my overdue tasks pile up and I need to get them the next day or the next day. Yeah, it gets overwhelming too, doesn't it? It If you don't, if you're not able to get to it, it's just, oh God, I... But look, you're doing, you obviously are doing all the right things if you have as much business, since you have as much business as you have. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like every single day you're growing your business into more of a business by hiring the right assistants. You have your TC. Um, And I want to applaud you for the first thing that you mentioned about what every agent should do. And that was connecting with your other agents. Yeah. Because a lot of people are afraid to do that. You know, they're afraid to walk up to somebody who's very successful and have a conversation about what they did and if they can integrate it because they're afraid they're going to be told no or I'm too busy. It's been the entire base of my business on a local level and also on a national level with Tom Ferry Group. I mean, if I didn't, if I didn't do that, I would be nowhere. No, you're totally, I, I agree with you 100%. I mean, you were so willing to just talk to me. I, you didn't know who I was. You know, <laughs> I, I literally just like, I, the you know. Not, you, I, it's not like an ego thing though, right? Like definitely I get it now because I remember the first time being at a Tom Ferry Summit and seeing the people on stage and then you idolize them. Like people don't need to idolize me. I'm, I'm just a real person. Exactly. Yeah. You're a real person with a secret. <laughs> um, well you have success you have you have amazing success but yes you're a normal person and that's why I love finding out about what you do during the day because at the end of the day you don't have to be this extraordinary individual you just have to have a path that a path you have to have a direction basically and a set of things that have to be done every single day in order to become like successful 
Yeah, and that's exactly. what everybody who's successful would tell you the exact same thing. You know, don't reinvent the wheel. Um, success leaves clues. You know, uh, figure out what your goal is and how, not just, oh, I, I want to own a yacht. I'm so bummed you're not coming on the yacht party. With Sorry, me. I know. It's okay. <laughs> you know, someone says, I want to own a yacht. Oh, that's great. That's great. But the people that say, okay, and I'm going to own it by doing this, 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 and achieving this yeah. to get to that point are the ones that get it instead of the ones that just put up a vision board basically and say, God, that's going to be so great when that happens. You know, it's right. So, you put, you put things in motion to get to where you want to go. Yes. You have to put the building blocks in place and know how you're going to get there. But I'll also say, something interesting that's happened like I had a high goal last year was my first full year in the business <laughs> like January, that's a, January to December and I was like I've got to make I had to overperform that year because okay. I had to buy a house this year because I had to get out of my shitty roommate situation and I had to make more than four hundred thousand dollars of GCI last year and <laughs> people are going to hear that and they're going to be like first year 400,000 GCI what the frick <laughs> you know actually my goal was it was 311 560 but we got to 420 and so I knew exactly where I was going we crushed the goal and now that I've been able to do that I'm like nothing is impossible nothing mm -mm. no like, nothing and that is like ingrained in my soul there's a difference between when people People have kids and like, you can do anything when you grow up, right? Like they don't really mean it a lot of times. I mean it. I am going to be a part of like the biggest development happening here in campus. Like I know it. I'm going to make, I'm going to wedge myself into it because I know I can do anything. Oh my God. Just hearing you say that, people say that kind of thing all the time. And I'll look at them and be like, mm -hmm. sure, buddy. But the passion in your face, I mean, your whole body came alive. You were just like, Got it. Your hands came up and everything. Oh. I mean, I I believe you 100%. Mm -hmm. I, I, I believe you 100%. And I can say another thing too. I know this is not the la that was not the last time we're going to see you on a Tom Ferry stage. <laughs> I think the next time you're on a Tom Ferry stage, you're going to be having your own spotlight by yourself, walking around stage, just like Jen did, yeah. telling people how they can do it too. Mm -hmm. I have no doubt in my mind. I am so excited to watch your journey too. And I mean, I'm learning from you right now. I am I'm learning from you and I'm so happy to do that. Yeah. You know, and I think to the older generation of realtors out there, if you're not seeking out the younger generation, like Hannah, who's killing it, you are going to fall behind. Your old school methods are not going to work forever. And at the end of the day, people are dying. I'm sorry, people are growing up, people are dying, you're going to need to get that newer generation of buyers and sellers. And the only way you're going to do that is by doing what people like Hannah are doing. Yeah, that's so true. And I promise you, if you reach out to her, she will respond back to you because she did with me. So yeah. if you have any questions, please reach out to her. She's incredible. Yeah, just DM me on Instagram. There you go. That's how, I don't even, Every single person that I have on this podcast, I do not have their, their phone numbers. Yeah. It's so funny. I just Instagram everybody and, and, and it's become such a normal way of contacting people now. Like I had an emergency yesterday and I couldn't get a hold of Hannah and I swear to God, I was like, oh, this would be a good time to have her number. <laughs> like, yeah. You, you tried know. to call me through Instagram. I know. So I tried to call her through Instagram uh, to let her know that I wasn't going to make the podcast, but um She's very willing to talk. As you guys can see, she's very willing to share whatever it is that's making her successful. So please don't hesitate to reach out to her if you have any questions. And I mean, Hannah, this has been amazing. Thank I think you. you're really going to, the people that will see this, this is a growing podcast. You know, right now we'll probably have probably a hundred people watching it. Yeah. Um, but over the next few months, I'm doing this every single week. We're going to have thousands that are going to be watching this. And you take the sense out of it. 100 percent. you're going to be changing lives and i really appreciate you being, being willing to come here and do that happy to be a part of it thanks for having me and have a wonderful day you too all right bye